all right thank you and welcome into let's do what news and entertainment if you are joining us very very first time please do well to tap on the subscription button for more updates what happens in anambra on a saturday as all eyes are being in anambra as we speculate for the election it all depends in the last three years, the Southeast has been in the state of war, partly as a result of political banditry by Abuja-based politicians determined to hijack power at all costs. Just as before voters in Anambra State decide the next governor, a party not on the ballot is getting serious attention. The indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, the separationist group demanding an independent homeland, has declared there would be no election on Saturday, not only to press its separationist demand, but also to depend and demand the release of its leader, Mazin Amdekano, currently in his seventh week in detention in Abuja for alleged treason, among other charges. IPOB is not a political party and Kano, its leader, is not on the ballot. But the leaders of uh, the 18 political parties, especially the four major ones, APGA, APC, PDP, and YPP, know that uh, where they stand on Kano may hinder or promote their chances. Meanwhile, as they struggled to extract their feet from their mouth during the televised uh, debate on Monday, you could sense that uh, Charles Soludo, APGA, and Andy Oba, APC, and Valentin Ozobo, PDP, desperately trying to appease IPOP members and their sympathizers. They know that how far they would go may depend on what they say about IPOP. If they couldn't win IPOP sympathizers over, they can't risk making them sad and mad. And to show how much it meant to have IPOP in this corner. For example, if I know by the Young Progressive Party, YPP, governorship candidate who couldn't uh, spare IPOP to save his life rushed to the court for a pass to visit Mazin Amdekano in DSS custody in Abuja. In the last three years, the Southeast has been in a state of war, partly as a result of political banditry by Abuja-based politicians determined to hijack power at all costs. The scourge at a politics of this group has shown scourge and raised tensions in the region. Even worse, government uh, incompetent uh, handling of the situation has uh, struck violence silenced the legitimate demand of the democratic groups and pushed IPOP to a lunatic fiend. But with that effort on Saturday, and with that effect Saturday, it depends. The decision of IPOP sympathizers in the past is abducted school children who defied sit-at-home orders from exam centers is an indication of the extent it could go to enforce its sensitivity. For its part, the federal government has been on a war footing deploying more politicians and more policemen and soldiers that could do outnumber the ratio of registered to actual voters. Yet, despite the long shadows of fear and misery, there is not much that is new about the Anambra governorship election. Low voter turnout is not new. Even though the state has a population of about 4.5 million, the most populated in the southeast, with a registered voter population of 2.5 million, the highest voter in their inventions. Anabra has uh, historically had a very low voter outcome, but has nothing to do with high pop which is relatively new thing, he said. No Anambra governor has been elected by silently more than one-tenth of registered voters in the state. As for those who have been trapping insecurity, you should know or also ask yourself why not one of the eight political parties in this election has said anything about it without their campaign, not one. One who also added that security could have been a big issue if people needed to travel long distance to vote. 
from what I have seen in the last one week, he said. Anek has taken polling journey closer to short work, walking distance from people's home. That will make it easier for them to exercise their franchise. Yet, fears remain that this is not just a governorship election, but a referendum on whom really control the Southeast. I proposed a, a cohort of Abuja politicians backed by federal might. In the short of the perfect time that uh, plays to the advantage of those who will deploy the monopoly of force not to protect citizens or voters, but to produce an outcome they wish to see, one that reinforces their stronghold in spite of voters. The lineup of a candidate does not lessen the misery of a political and the politician poor voter turnout. Two of the three leading candidates have been here before. Soludo, who on paper has an edge over the others, contested in 2011 on the platform of the PDP against former Governor Peter Obi. In Soludo's this school's journey, which appears to be the Every, the inevitable right of uh, passage for many Nigerian politicians. He has watched from PDP his former home to APGA, which he fought against 10 years ago. At the time, former B BOT chairman of the PDP, Tony Anayim, Anayim promised the Anambra voters that if they elect Soludo, he would change his name from Anet to Anene. He will name many is look up to God. Obi Wan and the names kept his name and Soludo left to fight another day. He returned to the hotline with a strong intellectual credentials and work history that planned many local and international institutions, notable the Central Bank of Nigeria, where he was governor and a member of the international financial institution, including the IMF and the World Bank, where he worked as a consultant. This reputation endorsed him to the media, but in a state famous for its brutal and predatory politics, it remained to be seen how Soludo will translate his solid way credentials to home advantage. Of course, being the outgoing governor's antecedent people, it helps as well, but we have also seen in a number of states, including Ogun State in 2019, that even the begotten, the, the begotten of the incumbent can fall at any time. Well, the name of Emeka Odumedu Ojuku, the father of Biafra nationalism and patron saint of APGA, saved Soludo the way it has perceived Obiano after Peter Obi's speculator fallout with the party. It remained to be seen. Incidents informed me on Wednesday night that until the last few weeks, Governor Obiano's house was divided. The governor wanted Soludo, his wife, the lady famous for her designer vaccines and classes, apart from her strong political views, made it clear that Chukuma Ume Umoji currently representing Oguata federal constituency was her preferred candidate. Also, ahead of Saturday's election, Obiano had a better taste of federal might with the loud and the conspicuous absence of all federal officials inv invited for the opening of the state airport. That has been interpreted as a warning sort. Does that dress a hair, uh, that, that dress rehearsal help the other candidates, especially Andy Oba, also trap as a strong consender and Abuja favorite? More than anything else, what Oba is currently is counting on is what Soludo weakness. The division is Obiano's house or even his airport opening misery. And they were by the 14-day Anambra governor who was removed by the court because he was alleged he was illegally installed, is still counting on his huge stock of favors for from Abuja and over years of uh, assiduously cultivating the bedroom and the corridors of power. 
That power has worked for him and his siblings. Briefly contoured when his brother Ugochuku Uba was called out for bribing a charge for a favorable election result in 2004. That power was in full fear when it was deployed to enabling and protecting Chris Uba who kidnapped Governor Chris Ngige for a ransom. That power has served Andy Uba through his political advocacy, transforming his family into something of a political anarchy, despite for good reasons, but hardly ignored. I'm told that there is something about this additional power effect that facilitated the common folk in Anambra and which Andy Uba could use to energize the, the, the grassroots who might regard Soludo as an Igbo man in diaspora. But Abuja politicians are not a solid block. Ngige Labour Minister and the highest ranking Anambra politician in, in President Mohamed Buhari's APC government may not have a better opportunity than now to take his revenge on the Oba claim. And he can count on this on his position in the pecking order of APC to find resources to execute his revenge. Does that mean that the PDP candidate Valentina Ezibo could reap from the record? It is impalpable. In the last 22 years, PDP ruled Anambra for 6 years and APGA for 16. Although Ezibo has strong private sector Credentials which would uh, sit or sort uh, an embrace the temperament of industry and entrepreneurship. His party's uh, influence in the state has won over the year, aggressively eroded by internal strife within PDP and the desperation of the ruling party APC to capture the Southeast at all costs, with Imo at a stringent post. If the main question at election time is whether people think life is better today than it was yesterday, the answer in Anambra will ordinarily be too obvious, but then it depends. It depends not on the promises made or kept, but on whether voters think they matter in holding politicians to count. This will be an initial counter with his instander and the benefactors. Peter will be over whether it was 79 billion naira or 90 or 9 billion naira that was left in the treasury, or whether government business order under Peter will be was withdrawal dressing the state has made something progress. In a country where about two thirds of the state had limited their current uh, obligation progress by governors would mean regular payment of salaries. It could also shamelessly mean how much the governor has done for his ancestral home and community and whether the government has at least maintained the record of his processors in areas such as school enrollment and access to the care to the health care. An opera election and the hubris go hand in hand but somehow the state has managed to find its way in spite of the odd. I hope it does so this time, although sometimes tells me it may not be settled at the ballot on Saturday. All right, my good people, I would like to have your take on this. Please do well to send them and remember to tap on the subscription button for more updates. Thank you and God bless you.